You're listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. Hello everybody, welcome to Garibaldi Red, the Nottingham Forest podcast from Nottinghamshire Live. I'm Michael Temple, keeping the seat warm for our regular host, Matt Davis, who's taking a well-earned Easter break. But he has left me in the company of legend of the city ground pitch, Gary Bertels. Gary, hello. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon now, yeah. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. And legend of the city ground stands, Greg Mitchell. <laughs> Greg, how are you? Yeah, great. Great. Love doing this after a big win, so happy to be here. Let's get stuck into it then. Forest 4-0 winners against West Brom at the city ground last night. The big talking point, of course, Gary, did Jack Colback mean it? <laughs> of course he did. I was saying last night, you look at his body shape and it's it's not a flu. It looks like a flu, but I, I'm not convinced. I... I I think he, he probably meant to volley it across early, which is always good because strikers like early early delivery. But I think his technique was superb when you watch it again. Yeah, let's just say it, it's an in-betweener, that one. Yeah, let him claim it. Let him say he meant it. Yeah, but he is a fullback, isn't he? He was playing fullback and, you know, can fullbacks do that? But he is a midfield player as well, so some midfield players can do it. But, yeah, it was, it was just a, a stunning, stunning goal. It certainly looked like he put pace and movement on the ball. Greg, are you giving him the benefit of the doubt as well? 100%. It's like when a golfer gets a hole in one and they say, like, did he mean it? Well, you, you're hitting it <laughs> towards the hole, aren't you? It's gone in. Uh, it was superb. I think I had a similar angle to you, Temps, and it was just lightning. And the roar of the crowd, because nobody's expecting it, whether he meant it or not, that's going to be one of the goals that in 10, 20 years' time, you say, oh, yeah, I was there. I saw that one. Just incredible. Yeah, I had a great view from the Brian Flow. I'm also going to give him the benefit of the, the doubt. I think a cross would have been more of a, a side foot technique. So fair play to Jack Colback for that. Um, one fellow that had a, a particularly bad game, Donnell Furlong, cleaned out Zinkanago early on, then the, the handball. Um, Gary, can he have any complaints? I don't think so. You know, when you're on a yellow card as a defender, the, the last thing you want to do is do something silly and give the referee an opportunity to give you another yellow card. So... I don't think he's got anything to look back on and think, well, I was a bit unlucky there. And that's not biased. It's just, you know, what everybody thought on the night. Yeah, certainly very, very careless, wasn't it? And the arm was, uh, the arm was certainly um, raised. Penalty needed converting, though. I suppose Brennan Johnson had a bit of uh, bad form from the spot with that lackadaisical chip down the middle beforehand. Were you confident when he stepped up, Greg? Yeah, because... It- I mean, it took him a couple of penalties to learn from, you know, his mistakes. But you, you knew he couldn't do that again. And the keeper went the right way as well. But I loved his consistent run-up as well. You hate it when they do these stuttered ones. And it was a, it was a cracking penalty from a, a quality player, wasn't it? So you expect him to keep scoring them now when he gets them again. Did you get the sense that somebody had been in his ear? It seemed like he was uh, back on the side foot with pace rather than the, uh, the flicks and tricks. I think you can guarantee somebody was certainly in his ear. Um, that, that's what happens at the city ground now. I think when people make mistakes, they're, they're made to be aware of the mistakes, why the mistake was made, and next time put it right. You know, you look at Samba. You know, he's back in the side now. That uh, you know ridiculous thing he did, and you learn, you've got to learn your lessons from it. You know, you can't keep doing it again and again because it makes you look silly regarding penalties. Just get up. Uh, I, I'm not sure. When, when it was given as a penalty, who was going to take it? It looked, it took, seemed to take quite a little bit of time to realise who was actually going to step up and take it. But you've got to give him his, his age to step up and say, right, I'll take it. After, you know, the, the previous one, I think it shows a lot, a lot of composure. Yeah, redemption for Brennan Johnson. You mentioned Bryce Samba there as well. There's been a lot of examples this season of Forest players and the group as a whole showing a certain resilience do you feel that greg is there a, a kind of mental strength there this year that's perhaps been lacking in the past definitely and his distribution last night again was brilliant you know his tiny little throws he does uh he's quick thinking that's the perfect samba for me the one that was playing last night you know no silly little games no oh, what's he doing but a quality goalkeeper who didn't have a lot to do in shot stopping but the first line of attack he really is like the way he gets his his balls out quickly, whether it's throwing it, kicking it, whatever. Uh, that's the goalkeeper that you, that you want in your side. And, you know, we're doing the next man up with Cooper and he was lucky enough that he gets his chance again after Horvath's 
uh, international break and he's took it and it, it's superb and you've got confidence in him again now and you hope just like Johnson with his penalties word in his ear it, you know it's worked this time and he was quality last night like I say even though he didn't have a lot to do shot stop it yeah my take on the goalkeeper debate is that Samba is the better all-round keeper I think Horvath's got great hands but just seems to struggle a little bit with the the ball at his feet is that um, debate dead now for you as well Gary I've always said I think Samba's the you know the better of the two keepers all round. Uh, he just looks you're very competent. It's just those little niggles that you think, oh, what's he going to do now? You know, we all saw that coming the sending off before, um, but the previous season he was fantastic. You know, he's he's been very consistent with it. Very very rarely makes mistakes. He, what it, what I like about him, he tries to take the pressure off the back four. You know, if you're under a bit of pressure, he'll come out and he'll try and, you know, nullify that threat. And he comes out on a regular basis, doesn't always get it right, but the majority of the time he does. And as a defender, you love a goalkeeper like that who will come and take that pressure off you. Yeah, certainly inspires a lot of confidence when his head's on the game. Let's talk about Ryan Yates then on the score sheet again last night. His ninth of the season hasn't always been um, embraced by Forest fans, but are we seeing the emergence this year as Ryan Yates as a, a complete midfielder? Uh, yeah, I mean, I noticed some of the fan groups, I think some uh, Munster have already said he's their player of the year and his improvement over the past couple of years, although I always rated him, is just showing about what's going on at this entire club at the minute. And I think another brilliant performance from him last night, another great goal. He was always, you know, talked about how his headers were going left, right and centre and that was just a bullet header, wasn't it? It was brilliant and... I just think players like him epitomise what is going on at the minute at our club. And he is the kind of person who you want there next season, no matter what league we're in. And he'll get even better. He'll keep improving. And he's not one of them that I think is in danger of being like poached or going elsewhere. He wants to be here. And we're going to get a couple of you know really good seasons out of him, or hopefully even longer. And long may his improvement continue, because you can't see it stopping at the minute. Yeah, he seems like a bit of a weapon from corners and set pieces, Gary. He's timing his runs into the box and um, seems to be have a, have a knack of, uh, of finding the finish as well. Have you been impressed by what you've seen in terms of his goal-scoring prowess? Absolutely. People think, oh, it's only a header, but, you know, believe me, it's a difficult technique to get right. And uh, it's, it's down to one man, really. Yes, it's down to Ryan for the way he's been playing, but Steve Cooper's just released the shackles of everybody for me. You know, every player you can see is different. They're, they're being allowed to express themselves. We've said this in previous weeks, uh, but you have to keep repeating that because that is why we are where we are at the moment. You know, very similar squad. Players have just reacted unbelievably well to what the manager wants. Uh, it's not just individuals. It's as a team, as a squad. It's a happy place. And you can see that when they're out there on the pitch. Um, and... You just feel that every game they play at the moment, they're, they're going to win it. And the players seem to think that as well. You know, they, they, they don't see that word lose in their vocabulary. It's, it's right, we're going to go out there, we're the better side, we're going to beat you. Didn't happen at Luton for various reasons. That uh, I mean, I'm sure we're going to the standard of refereeing at the moment. It's, it's, some of the games I've seen have been abysmal. It really has. And it's as if they don't know the rules, um, especially the Luton game. But there were some last night as well. You know, West Brom would have considered themselves very unlucky because it was their throw-in. And all of a sudden, you think you've got the throw-in, then you haven't got it, and you're on the back foot straight away. They give a corner away, and that's when we scored. So, you know, they got their gripes. Uh, I think it was a sending off as well. So, yeah, it's, it's just disappointing to see that standard, you know, becoming a regular thing at the moment, it appears. So, but... You know, it, we had to win last night. We had to respond from the Luton game. And that is something we've not, I don't think, we've seen before under previous regimes that that's happened. Um, we've gone into our shells a little bit, maybe, because we've lost the game. We try not to lose the next one. But last night, we were massively on, intent on winning that game. You know, from the first whistle, it was just obvious that, right, we're going to put this right. We shouldn't have lost at Luton. And we're not going to lose tonight. Apologies for a slight loss of sound there. We've had a minor problem with uh, Gary's mic, which we hope will, uh, will sort itself out. Yeah, let's touch on that a little bit then, um, Greg. The BBC um, described Forrest as having three fortune-laced goals in the first half last night, referring to the penalty, 
Um, the throw in, which as Gary said, deflected off Spence and, and actually led to the, the corner from which Yates he scored uh, and, the, and the cold back strike. Is that extremely harsh, suggesting yeah. that there was uh, you know, more than an element of luck in the way that Forrest went about the business in the first half? I'll obviously give them one out of three because that was crazy, that throwing, because the linesman and ref gave it them and then the fourth official seemed to overrule it. So bizarre, absolutely bizarre. No consistency, but for once it went our, our way. Uh, the penalty was stonewall. You just, there's no argument against that. It's a shot on target and his arms raised. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think we've had it so bad recently. I, I'm trying to erase Luton from memory because we've we've been lucky the last few weeks that the awful officiating hasn't like stopped the results we've still got the results but that Luton game it was atrocious there was I mean there was one where two of their players knocked into each other and they get a free kick and it's it's not good enough and I don't know why why it's happening more than ever at the minute is it because we're on TV more and we're, we're seeing more of these mistakes but luckily for for us it's only really been that Luton game it's affected us so Going back to the West Brom game, we win that game with them having 11 players and having one of the best referees there as well. We we dominated them. There was no unfortunate thing other than the throw-in and, you know, Steve Bruce's comments after the game were a bit ridiculous and reeked a bit of a, a desperate manager, I, I imagine. But, uh, no, just another great win and no complaints my side for once. So... Bruce's comments, a debatable penalty, a ludicrous red card, describe the officials as awful. Gary, clearly you've got your own concerns about the, the men in black. What have you seen, what have you seen recently? Uh, well, the, the Luton game for me was just dreadful. I mean, I drove all the way back from North Wales uh, with my family just to watch that game at half past 12 and saw that. I mean, they have their gripes as well, Luton, um, because of the, you know, the sending off. Shouldn't have been a sending off. Um, so it was just an all-round bad performance from all the officials on that particular day. And uh, there's not a lot you can do about it. You know, you can burn as much as you like. You can't, it won't change anything. Mm. Uh, if we'd have taken the chance that I had, I think we'd have won the game um, and gone on to win it. But it didn't happen again. Uh, then he hit the post. So it was just one of those days that wasn't going to be our day by the look of it. And sometimes you have to accept that uh, and just move on. And clearly... Uh, the, the whole squad moved on under Steve's guidance again and he, he brings that belief to you know the, the players within that squad that they can go out and win every game you know you're better than them I've said this in the past how Brian Cluffy used to say that to us he wasn't bothered about what you couldn't do he was just bothered about what you were good at what you could do and that gives a player a huge amount of confidence going out on the football pitch so let's compare Bruce's comments to those from Steve Cooper, who simply said, we forced it. We, we made them make the errors. We grabbed the game by the stuff of the neck. We had the shots. We you know, peppered the box for the penalty. Zink and Nagel ran at him to, to draw the yellow card. Um, so, you, I mean, we've, we've got to back Steve Cooper, hasn't he? Forrest, Forrest forced that result last night, Greg. Yeah, and they forced it, but they dominated it, and then they never gave up. Uh, the second half, we knew we didn't need to you know, keep scoring. And we had 81% possession, I think it said. And that's what he's going to love that, isn't he? Just dominating the game, keeping hold of it, not giving them a sniff. I think one of the interviewers last night basically said, uh, you know, 3 0 up, uh, second half, they're down to 10 men, can you relax a bit? And you could see in his eyes, he looked like shocked in the, in the question, like, no, of course we can't, just keep going. Um, and the, the players just play so well for him. You know, Sink dropped last game, played brilliantly last night and made such a difference and I just love the way Cooper thinks about things I love the way the next man up if needed he spoke about Davis last night uh, and that's that's gutting that is for us but it's not a concern because Surridge starts and Surridge scores and he plays well so I love his confidence and it comes onto the players and it definitely comes into the stands. Yeah, Greg mentioned we, that, that concept there, the next man up, Gary. You must, you must have been pleased to see Sam Surridge wait patiently for his chance, shine with his minutes off the bench, and then take, uh, take the opportunity when it came his way last night. Uh, I love him. Um, I love what he does. I love his work rate, his, his ethics about the game. And he's one of the best finishers I've seen. The goals he's scored for us so far have been absolutely out of the top draw. You know, if, if that had been Messi or Ronaldo, you'd have been purring. The one last night was a stunner again. He doesn't panic. 
he, he caresses the ball into the net. You know, he doesn't try and smash the back off it. And, you know, like even top quality players in the Premier League, you see do that. And he goes 20 foot over the bar. When he gets that opportunity, he just finishes so well. That's the confidence that's oozing out the whole team at the moment. A little, a little bit of an argument here with, not an argument, with Greg. Second half, we always used to want to win six or seven against anybody. We used to want to trample teams, you know, and say, right, you know, you, we're not letting you get away with anything. Um, that would be my, my only gripe. And I was watching Steve in the second half, and he was getting annoyed at times. You could see he was getting annoyed on the touchline at certain things that were going on at certain times. And when you see a manager doing that, you think, hmm, he, he's maybe not happy. He wants to go a little bit more, you know, uh, on the positive side and, and take the game totally away from them. Yeah, we were playing against 10 men. Never feel sorry for your opponents. You know, goal difference is goal difference. And, um, yeah, and at times, I, I'm very picky at times because when you play at a high level, you know, you're, you're looking for that. And at times, one thing that annoys me, not, not saying with just the forest, but when players play the ball under no pressure and it goes half a yard behind the player who's receiving it, when it can go half a yard in front and you can get on the front foot straight away. And at times, I think that was it's only a little niggle from me when they were, you know you're doing that. Do you understand what I'm saying? It gives if you're playing it slightly behind a player under no pressure, then it gives their uh, players an opportunity to close down a yard quicker. But if you play it in front, they're on the back foot, and that, that that's only small things. But it, it's things you can look at and say, right, you know, we can we. Can do better in those sort of situations. Let make sure it's in front of the player. Yeah, I think uh, against ten men last night, there were clearly times when Forrest um, could have perhaps ground West Brom into the ground, um, pass the ball till they're almost taking the mick, have them move around, tie them out, draw that frustration. And fewer money than Gary, there were just certain moments in the second half where they perhaps forgivably slipped into fourth gear. Yeah, of course. Um, but you know, after losing at Luton. All you've got to do is win the next football match. And they did that with a plomb. It's just, you're desperate because they're 3 up against 10 men for them to run riot and just take, you know, take them apart. And uh, and then that sends a message out yet again. I think last night's game would have sent a message out anyway. Nobody wants to play us. You know, we, we should have got something out of Luton. We're unlucky because of certain circumstances. Um, but nobody will want to play us at the moment. Uh, Peterborough has still got something to fight for. Um, they didn't get relegated last night, so um, that might be a bit difficult as well. We again don't think it's going to be easy because you know no game in the championship at this stage of the season is easy when teams have got things to play for still. So Steve will be telling his team that they'll go out and they'll be ultra positive, and they won't take them lightly. You can guarantee that. Greg, what was your reaction when the team sheet dropped? Obviously, we had a suspicion that um, Davis wouldn't be involved. We weren't sure about. Um, McKenna and Cook, um, there were definitely more than a few eyebrows raised when uh, that, that news filtered through that Davis is uh, unlikely to take uh, any further part unless Forrest were to qualify for those playoff semi-finals. What was your first reaction when you saw the 11 to face West Brom last night? I, I, I mean, the Davis thing wasn't a surprise, but I was delighted to see McKenna because I thought he'd be injured. And you, we're so close to the end of the season, you just don't know if it's the last game to see them. So that was brilliant. Seeing Cook on the bench was huge, thinking, well, if McKenna can't do the 90 minutes, he's there and he's ready and he's back, you know, he's back when we weren't really talking about him being back. Uh, we've got, I still can't, is it Layard, Le, what's the Canadian? Laria. <laughs> Laria. Uh, he was ready and we said, I said to my friend Sam that if we get three or four goals, it'd be great to see him come on and you could feel the excitement in the crowd after a bit of a, you know, a boring second off, seeing him make his debut. So, it was good. It was good to see the bench. You know, a lack of strikers there, really, which with the Davis issue potentially could be a problem. But no, I was happy with it. It was fine. Well, Graben's going to be back, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's illness, isn't it? So it's not. Yeah. A, yeah. So that's good. That's fine. So what, how do how do you manage that mix then, Gary? Surridge has staked his claim there. Clearly wants to uh, keep hold of that shirt. Uh, Davis on the sidelines. Graben, we think back for the next game after sitting this one out with, with illness. But he's, a, he's another player who will expect to start. Yeah, well, the, the two of them can play to, to, together, I think, because they, 
they would complement each other because of Surridge's work rate and his work ethic. I think that would suit Lewis Graben, you know, because he, you know, he's getting no younger. And we all know where Lewis is most dangerous when he's feeding off people and when he gets the delivery into the box. So I, I think the, the, the way they complement each other, I know how important that is as a deck striker, as a centre half as well. When you're playing alongside somebody you trust in and you can work off, then you know you, you're a confident player going out there. And it really does help you as an individual that your mate is there and you know he's going to help you. And I think with Surridge doing that, um, you know, it takes the pressure off Lewis a little bit because the pressure has, you know, been on, on him a lot in the past seasons because he's been our main goal scorer. He's been the one who's expected to more or less do it single-handedly at times. But everybody's chipping in. I mean, look at Brennan in double figures this season. Ryan Yates, everybody's chipping in. Um, still baffles me how centre arse aren't scoring goals at the moment in any standard of football. You know, you look around the world football, there used to be centre arse in double figures on a regular basis, but there aren't any anymore. And I, I think it's all because of a stupid rule where you can grab a player until the ball comes into the pitch. You know, that, that rule for me has got to change because defenders know they can get away with it until that ball is delivered. Let referees give penalties for it before it's played. Um, it is a bit annoying, but then that gives players like Ryan Yates the opportunity to get in there. And his timing is in, in, impeccable for me. You know, you, that, that's what it's all about. It's probably half a yard. That's all it is. And uh, he does it on a regular basis now, and uh, you've got to applaud him for that. Yeah, we did look a big side last night, certainly when we were lining up with those attacking corners and we sent um, the, the centre-halves forward. Yatesy um, perhaps took one or two headers off, off their heads, but is, is that an area Forrest can continue to, to exploit, particularly in games like this, when they seem to be having far more corners than the opposition uh, and Garner has that um, incredible delivery? Yeah, I think his incredible delivery has been a little bit lax in, in, in a couple of the games. You've seen them go beyond everybody. It's not getting past the first man. But last night was a whole lot better. You know, I think he got most of it right last night. And when you've got somebody who can deliver you know, that quality on a regular basis as a centre-half, as a, you know, like Ryan as a midfield player, strikers, they love it because it gives them the opportunity to get half a yard on the marker. And uh, when that quality keeps coming in your box as a defender, it drains you, it, it saps you as a, as a defender because you're thinking... Oh, no, not another one. Here, here comes another one. We've got to defend it again. And you can switch off. And if you switch off, we have the capabilities and the players to punish you, you know, because they are that good in those areas. So long may it continue. Greg, who was your man of the match last night? Colback for the shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it had to be Jake. It had to be Garner. He was superb. Um, Again, I saw his stats this morning, so cheating a little bit after seeing that, but he was he was top of basically everything and everything that he's there to do. He was the best player on the pitch at doing it. Um, he's got that good now. If we don't go up, I don't think he'll be in the championship next season. And I feel like if we go up, he's got to be one of the players that we, we, we try for because he is superb. And at the start of the season, there was a lot of people saying, like, is he... Is he going to make the standard? Because he wasn't playing very well and he's just another one who's just come along so much. And another one that shows how good Nottingham Forest are at like budding these young quality players for Premiership talent. And, and I think that's key and I think that's going to be great for us next season. And here's the prime example about what Steve Cooper does you know, to these top four players. And I, he, was, he was just brilliant. He was so good. Uh, one of his best games so far this season. And only Shet overshadowed by, you know, an absolute worldie from Colback, but he, he was brilliant. There was a nice moment after the game, actually, on the Sky Sports uh, broadcast <laughs> where they were interviewed together and uh, Colback was asked if he meant it. And as soon as he said he did, God, I just couldn't, couldn't um, stop himself laughing. <laughs> um, what do you think Man United's plan will be for James Garner, Gary? Obviously, they've got a, a prodigious <laughs> talent there and they've got their own problems at Old Trafford trying to balance that side. Um, big stretch to say, having impressed in the championship, that he can solve Man United's problems. But they um, they've signed him to a, a long term contract, and they uh, they clearly hold him in high regard. They do hold him in high regard, and, and rightly so. Uh, but it's I can remember Manchester United when Beckham, Scholes, all that era, they all went out on loan as well to the different 
clubs, lower clubs, and it did them a, a power of good. You know, the gaffer used to say, learn your trade. And that's where you learn your trade when you come on loan. And I, just, I don't think there's any chance of him going back to Man United, no matter who comes in there, and in getting in the team. Because they are in disarray at the moment, um, you know, for Manchester United. They're still, yeah, they're still in the top six or whatever, but they're in, everybody knows they're in disarray. They only just struggled through against Norwich at the weekend because of that one man again who's been getting stick, which baffles me because without his goals, they'd have been in bigger trouble. Um, so it's, it's going to be very difficult for James Garner to go back there and get in. It, it all depends on who comes in, who fancies you. Uh, that's at any level. That is at any level at uh, any football club. And we're very lucky at our football club at the moment because we have man who's come in who has just taken the whole club by the throat and said, right, you know, I want to change this. I want to be the person who takes us back to the Premier League. And we're so fortunate to have him and his backroom staff who, you know, you, you don't always see that, but I'm lucky enough, at the, you know, to see what's going on behind and, you know, what, how they think and you know how they go about the business and it's fantastic to watch it really is and um, I, I just can't wait for the next game to come and the Luton one was a disappointment like I said I sped back from North Wales to, to get it at half past 12 then there were technical issues with the, the start of the game and everything but uh, no it's just a great place to be at the moment you saw that last night I mean the, the the noise levels again because West Brom, I think, more or less sold out their uh, quota of tickets. Um, it was just, you know, a wonderful place to be yet again. Yeah, Steve Cooper's been superb. There will always be bumps in the road, though, and one such um, was the defeat at Luton. Uh, Greg, you were there. Um, just talk us through your view of the um, the incident that led to the Luton penalty um, and also the, uh, the, the wrongly ruled out Jed Spence goal. Um, those two incidents clearly had a huge bearing on the game. The Spence goal was the really frustrating one because you could kind of see where the ref was coming from with the handball. And you, it, at the time, it definitely looked like it, but they, they kind of both handled it. But the Spence one was so frustrating. The linesman was so close to it, he should have seen it. Uh, and it, for it to be disallowed, it just killed it because... Luton did such a job on us, such an ugly team, such a horrible way of playing. As soon as they got in front, they didn't want that ball on the pitch at all. It was in the stands. It was slow. It was awful. And I thought West Brom thought we know how to play against Forest, And they tried it for the first 10 minutes and it didn't work. And I loved that. And I loved how Cooper had gone, right, if teams think this is how you beat Nottingham Forest, it ain't happening tonight. But... The Luton game was so frustrating because we win that and we, we're having different conversations, I think, at the minute. But also, it was a bit of realism, I think. Like we, We're suddenly saying this team is ready for the playoffs and it's the best team in the playoffs at the minute. The team that nobody wants. I'm delighted Middlesbrough aren't in there because we get Jed Spence and keep that going. But it was disappointing and but there was no dropped heads after you know on the bus on the way home no one was upset or you know going back to last night next to the West Broms hearing them sing sack the board and you almost got a little bit depressed hearing that thinking god we've been there so many times that you've got to really appreciate how good it is at Forest at the minute because we're going through a stage that we haven't been through for years and and we're not taking it for granted because everyone's absolutely loving it, obviously, but it doesn't last forever. And that little blip of Luton, I think maybe if we were going to lose a game, that was the game to lose. And now for the running, we're going to remember that and keep pushing on. And, you know, it's not it's not something to be too downhearted about because yesterday proved why not. I think the most disappointing thing for us as fans was just the officiating. Mm. Not, not particularly how we played. Yeah, give Luton credit first half. They were all over us. They stopped our key players getting involved. But second half, we came, as we know, we can come right back into games. And I think we're unlucky not to get anything out of that. I, I was sat there saying, I'll take a point now. And then we hit the post and we had the goal, you know, the goal was disallowed. And there were so many, you know, with Lewis grabbing that chance in the first half, you know, I don't think he got fully behind it as he normally does. If that goes in, it's totally different. It's not like we were absolutely dreadful for 90 minutes and we no. thoroughly, deserved to lo th thoroughly deserved to lose the game. Um, we, th we thoroughly deserved something out of the game, but you know, 
shocking officiating just let us down uh, on that particular day. And you, you have to move on. You know, Steve said, you know, can't do anything about it. Got to move on. You know, concentrate on your next game. It's the old cliche, one game at a time. Uh, forget the ones that have gone. Happened there, but the next one you get it right. And my word, they they got it right last night. Okay, Greg made the point there about Luton's physicality and and aggression. Is it fair to say we might come up against that more now as a result of the joy that Luton had, or was it a case of uh, a lack of protection from the officials? Right. Let, let's just put this into perspective a little bit. You have got to give Luton Town so much credit for what they've done this season. They've got the smallest budget, I think, in the league, and they're in the top six. It doesn't matter how you do it, how you get in the top six, if that suits you with the, the amount of money you can spend with it and the players you've got within that squad, then he's doing a hell of a job for me. You know, he's got uh, Chris Cohen there, he's got Paul Hart, you know, two ex-Forest players. And, um, you know, the job they've, they've done this season has been phenomenal, really. And Coventry, you have to say the same, we're outside the playoffs, you know, got beat last night. But you, you look at teams like that who have been in contention all season and have Give them a round of applause. You know, it's a difficult league. We all know how difficult it is to get out of the championship because, you know, the, the promised land is at the end of it. If you get the, you know, the Premier League, even if you go straight back down, you get that huge payment. And, um, yeah, so I wasn't surprised that it was as close as it was because, you know, I know Paul Hart. I know part he plays uh, in what goes on down there. And, um, you know, he would have had a big part in what went on in that game I would think as would Chris you can only play what you've got within your squad and that's what they do they play to their strengths we're lucky in the fact that we have so many different options of the way we can play the way we can adapt to games but when you haven't got that you just have to go out there and say right this is us that, this is what you, you see what you get you know and fair play to them but uh you know, our, our season has been, you know, as good as theirs. Um, I think everybody expected it to be, but it didn't start that way. Nobody expected to be us to be where we are now. Not, not the biggest optimist, I think, in the world would have said, right, Forest are going to be in the playoffs at the end of the season, playoff positions at the start of the season. Um, but we are, and we thoroughly deserve to be where we are. Uh, you know, we're unlucky a little bit not to be, maybe a little bit closer to Bournemouth. That could still happen. But that was a great, you know, massive win for Bournemouth last night because Coventry is a proverbial bar, uh, banana skin, and uh, they they overcame that, and that will give them confidence. But we've still we've still got to play them. They've still got a really tough run in, so you know, just keep believing that you can do it. Yeah, still lots of football to be played. One thing that was settled last night was Derby County's relegation. Greg, I don't want to dwell on it too yeah, much. Smile but... on your face, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> with us in uh, with us in different divisions next year, will that rivalry be missed? No, it needed a break. And it, it, nobody wants to see it. Oh, I can't even do it. I can't even you're pretend to say it. Well, <laughs> uh, it's about time. Yeah. It, it should have happened last season. It only didn't because Chef Wednesday had the point deduction. Clubs need to be punished when you run like that. And it's finally happened. We're now, which isn't a stat to be proud of, we're the longest serving club in the Championship. Hopefully that changes again at the end of the season. So... You know, get rid of them for a few years, forget about them, let them see how tough and horrible it is in that league because they're all talking like they're going to bounce back and it just doesn't happen. You look at us, you look at Sunderland, Sheffield Wednesday, they're struggling again a little bit. Um, it's a horrible league to be in and you think you're going to have a bit of a party and get promoted again. It doesn't happen and I think that club needs some realisation and hopefully, you know, it'll get ran at an OK standard but nothing... <laughs> Nothing too good, but good riddance. I, I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from, Greg. Uh, but I, I have to look at the whole picture here. Uh, I think you will miss a rivalry because everybody looks for those fixtures straight away. And the, the other one was Blackpool because it's by the seaside. You know, so the you know everybody's fans can go there. But you have to admire. It's not about the fans, Derby fans. Their fault. It's not about the management and the players. Their fault. We know whose fault it is, and that's the disappointing thing for me. It could have been avoided. It wasn't avoided. And, you know, Wayne Rooney, to be fair, has done a magnificent job to keep them in contention until now because we, we talked about this a few weeks ago. They would have been a point behind us without their point, points deduction in the league if, if that, that was the case. 
So in that in that respect, I, that's why we're lucky to have the owner we have, because he keeps us where we are. He, he's got people behind him who know exactly what has to happen at the club to be, for it to be run right. And unfortunately, for other football clubs, as we've seen, they don't get it right. And you feel sorry for the fans, you know, of every football club. I know it's the, the rival between us and Derby is, is massive. But the football fans, like you, Greg, like me, like you, Michael, it, it's, it, it's sad to see it in that situation um, because it's not the right way to go and get relegated. If you get relegated, then you deservedly get relegated, not a problem. But when it's out of your hands as a player, as a manager, then, you know, it, it's a little bit galling. Yeah, I'll miss the rivalry. I think I'm with you on that, Gary. Um, enjoy the games. Great team to beat. Thoroughly depressing when we've lost to Derby um, over the years. But um, I will take Greg's point too, that um, you cannot flout the rules in the manner in which they had with, without escaping punishment. Let's have a look at the league table then. Forest fifth on 70 points. Uh, games in hand on all of those playoff rivals. Greg, you must like the look of this. Yeah, I do. And like Gary says, we're not out that top two yet, but we've really consolidated our, our place in you know, a bit of a post-season run, haven't we? And if it is the playoffs, I like the look of the teams around us as well. Like I say, Middlesbrough is always the one that's worried me and I've been thinking that for weeks, but I'd love to get Luton in the playoffs. I think we'd learn so much from the other day that we'd really go for them. That The one team you always worry about is if we do finish third, uh, that team that sneaks in at six, which looks like it could be someone like Millwall. They've had another good win and, you know, you, you worry about that type of team. But I think we're the best team out of those those six there, those seven or eight that could be involved. And it's going to be a different time, this, this playoff run, if it is playoffs. Uh, we're going to be the team to beat. We'd hopefully have the, the home game second and I'd just be excited to see who it is. And if it is Sheffield United, we haven't got to worry about the low factor because we've got Colback and others that can, can play there more than competently now. So I'm just excited. I'm excited for Saturday. It'll be a little bit sad that Peterborough are going to go down if we beat them. But, you know, I think they're going to be down anyway, pretty much, aren't they? So their fans aren't going to be too disheartened. And we keep going and we keep, we keep winning. We win every game now until the end of May and we're in the Premier League, aren't we, one way or another? Gary, what about that gap to second then? Seven points the difference, five to play, and we play Bournemouth as well. Is, it, is that gap bridgeable? Well, you look at their running, and it's, it's not the easiest. Um, but the win, will, like I said, will give them massive confidence, going to Coventry and winning as comfortable as that. You know, there's talk of nerves. It, there's always going to be nerves in and around that top six because the importance of the prize to get into the Premier League, we all know what it's about. Um, at the moment, if we'd have beaten Luton, on um, when was it Friday? I think Bournemouth would have been under a lot more pressure. I think that we did that took the pressure off them a little bit. I think that point they got the nil nil. Where, where did they get the nil nil on Saturday? They got that one point, didn't they? Uh, Bournemouth, I think that helped massively. Middlesbrough, was it Middlesbrough? Yeah, so I, I just think you know, the pressure's on them to hold on to number two, you know, and the rest of us can try and take it off them. So, uh, you know, the next game will be interesting for both teams. You know, I don't know who they've got on Saturday. Is it, uh, who have they got Saturday? Bournemouth? Don't know. Not sure. But let's have a quick look at the Forest fixtures. So, Forest, of course, travel to Peterborough this Saturday before the rearranged uh, trip to London to face Fulham on Tuesday and round off the week at home to Swansea. Greg, what are you looking for from, uh, from these three fixtures? Uh, win on Saturday. I think, you know, it's a really, really winnable game, that is. I think Fulham go up tonight, don't they? So they're going to be having their their party game. And I remember we've played teams before, like West Brom, a few years ago when they went up and we beat them at their place. So that's a winnable game. Swansea at home's winnable. And, you know, Gary's got me thinking again now. I thought I'd got over the top two. <laughs> that Bournemouth game, when, when you say seven points with five to go, it, it sounds a lot more doable, doesn't it? So I just think we're going to have a really strong end to the season. We've had a little blip with Luton and I think we could go unbeaten toward, for the end of the season now. Well, producer Dan's had a look for us, Gary, and Bournemouth have Fulham next. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, Fulham, as we know, Derby beat Fulham. 
So Fulham, they are beatable at the moment. Even though they look certainties, they, they can't quite get over the line at the moment. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting. You know, it's, 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 there's a lot to play for still. If you don't believe you've got a chance of getting that second place, you don't deserve to go out there and play. You've got to think that's possible and, and win every game you can and just hope that uh, you know they do trip up. Let's leave it on that positive point. Gentlemen, thank you very much for keeping me company um, this afternoon. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. Just remains for me to thank Greg Mitchell. Cheers. Thanks. See you next time. And Gary Bertels. Yeah, pleasure, Tabs. Well done. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Garibaldi Red, a Nottingham Forest podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks for listening.